I just wanted to give you a quick snapshot of now that we're coming up on the end of 2009, uh, what does the industry feel like, uh, what's happening inside of ECO, and uh, then kind of reiterate what the uh, mission and vision of the company is. I don't know if you've all seen some of the same statistics I have. Uh, there are regionally specific uh, numbers around this, but if you look at those regional numbers and compare them to the world, I think there's only a few uh, regions of the world that didn't follow these same trends. In 2009, construction starts uh, across the board for all uh, construction projects is down 25%. Now we're talking about an industry, as you all know, that is um, the largest private sector uh, contributor to most nations' GNP. For that to be down 25% is a whopping change. Uh, in, in a growth year, an absolutely uh, on fire year, the construction industry may grow five or six points. Anything in double digits is a big move, and down 25 points is, of course, drastic. These curves on the right show construction starts uh, from 2001 through 2009, uh, and construction put in place for the same 10-year uh, period. And, and you can see that uh, 2009 was very challenging for our customers. Commercial construction, that is commercial buildings, was even worse, down 43% uh, in terms of starts. Um, so most of our customers are the larger general contractors and CMs who came into this economic uh, crisis with a fairly large project backlog, 18 to 24 months in many cases. And so they entered this with projects that kept them busy, and the real test is how many new projects begin to emerge before they start to run out of work. Um, I'm happy to report that most feel like we've touched bottom, we're kind of bouncing along bottom, and now some new projects are getting uh, let go, and some of our customers are have been very active in bidding new projects. Now they're actually starting to win some. The drop-off was less severe in what we call the institutional space, that is uh, government and uh, public projects. Uh, there's really two reasons why the institutional market was less impacted. One is the demand didn't diminish greatly in 2009, and for commercial construction, particularly office space, the demand did diminish greatly. The other thing is many of the institutional projects are owner-funded, or at least a large percentage of the product project is owner-funded. They don't have to borrow so much money to create it, whether that's a big hospital uh, built by a medical group or a educational facility like a laboratory at a large university. There may be a little bit of uh, lending involved, but mostly owner-funded. And with the banks being in the kind of trouble they were, that's what really shut the commercial market down. So it was a very tough year uh, for our customer. Many of them remained focused in the government, healthcare, and education space and survived because of it. The other thing that changed quite a bit is the delivery system around uh, how these projects work. You've heard us talk about this a lot. You'll see it blogged a lot. You know, Holly's covered it a lot in Fridays with Vicos, um, where we used to do a lot of work with customers in a paid pre-con engagement uh, where uh, bids for construction hadn't even gone out yet, but the contractor was on a paid and fee-based engagement with the owner, with the design team, to bring some constructability know-how into the project before it went to bid. Those have changed quite a bit. I think of all the things that changed in 2009 because of the economy, the one I'm disapp most disappointed in is that owners almost immediately reverted to the old bad behavior of hard bid and predatory pricing in a market where every builder was hungry. So uh, a lot of things went to hard bid, a lot of pre-con engagements, paid pre-con engagements shut down. And we've had to adjust uh, to that as our customers have had to adjust to that. So lots of moving parts, a very difficult year, and yet virtual construction grew in 2009. What we're experiencing now is, uh, and the, the various regions of the world, and I think maybe the business cultures of those regions handle this topic differently. Um, in the Nordics, uh, where there's less bragging and just a lot more performance, I would say that the, those customers believe they have always uh, walked the walk instead of talked the talk. Uh, but certainly in, in uh, most of the world, we now see that Creating a 3D model and spinning it around on the screen in order to impress the owner is no longer su uh, sufficient. And we have a lot of customers who are walking the walk now and actually using uh, 
uh, virtual construction techniques to plan the project and to run the project. And this is being verbalized to us. It's not just an observation that we have noticed a different behavior. Our customers are telling us they have to move on to be differentiated and to be competitive. Um, I've included here an excerpt from a 2009 smart market report published by McGraw-Hill Construction Group. Um, and they've been doing the survey for years. The one I've circled is the BIM adoption. They would categorize our 5D virtual construction as BIM for construction, so it's all in the same category. BIM adoption and usage in 2009, I circled the contractor uh, poll, which shows that one-third of all contractors polled are creating and analyzing models uh, using BIM in the construction process. 51% still are not using BIM at all but fully one-third are. Look at everybody else. Look at the architect, look at the engineer, look at the owner uh, on this chart. In 2009, the contractors passed everybody. Now, they might just be making a 3D model and doing clash detection. That counts in this survey. Uh, but that's good news because once they get past that, they've got to go to the next level, and we need everybody to do 3D before they're ready for 4D and 5D. BIM usage by contractors has quadrupled in the last two years. Our customer is moving faster than any other supply sector in the AEC industry. So that's wildly encouraging to us that uh, the contractors really get it and see the benefit for them. As far as VECO goes, a little report on the state of the company. Uh, revenue will be up 2009 over 2008. As I said, uh, despite the economy, virtual construction grew, so did we. I won't pretend that we grew to the targets that we had hoped for. So 2009 fell short of what we had hoped. But I'm declaring victory that it's bigger than 2008 in, in this world economy. We did close our Series B round of $3.6 million in financing from our investors. I think you probably saw or had access to that announcement uh, back in the early fall when we released it. Um, and commensurate with the 2009 year being a rough one, we did reduce expenses for the near term in order to bring ourselves back within a financed plan as a company. So financially, we're in great shape. Um, as I said, we're encouraged that um, although 2009 was an unwelcome bump in the road, it feels like most of our customers are uh, coming up now from the, from the bottom they've been at for about six to nine months, starting to win new projects. I think importantly, I wanted to point out, as you look at customers in 2009, our new account production, uh, that is people who had not previously done business with Vico prior to January 1, 2009, as a percentage of our revenue this year, uh, the new accounts were uh, smaller than it was uh, the previous year. So new accounts came in, but they spent less. But by number, new accounts increased over the previous year. We, we won more business from new customers, albeit they were smaller orders. And you could, um, you could find fault with the fact that they're smaller orders. Uh, the, the economy pretty much dictated that. They had less uh, money, dis discretionary money to invest and, and look for new techniques like uh, virtual construction. But what's important to us is that's new accounts in the fold that we know will grow and will increase and will demand more from both of us, uh, from you and from Vico. So that's building the account base for the future, and that's really good news. The other thing, is, uh, as I alluded to before, our existing accounts, those we have done business with for more than a year and up to in some cases, uh, going with this team, predating Vico back some four or five years. The existing accounts are maturing, and as they do so, they move from just using these tools for planning a project to actually using these tools to run them, or just using these tools to experiment, to try to understand where the benefits might come to them, to actually implementing, because they now understand where the benefits do derive. And from 3D to 5D, as I said earlier, um, I think a lot of folks would have defined uh, virtual construction three years ago as I built the model and I did clash detection. That's all pretty low-hanging fruit 3D stuff. And now uh, moving into uh, derived schedules, derived estimates, and production control uh, usage right off of the model as the dashboard for the project is becoming more prevalent. And as I said in my, I believe, uh, second, first slide, we're hearing it from the customer. We're not deducing this and, and announcing it to you ourselves. So that's really encouraging news. I think we're in a strong position to move forward from here. 